Hello and welcome to today's webinar, an introduction to Cloudflare Web3 Gateways. Thank you so much for joining us on the webinar today. Uh, this event is, of course, produced in partnership with our friends over at Cloudflare. Before we get started, there's just a few things that you should know about today's event. Uh, first off, I should mention, uh, my name is David Davis of Actual Tech Media, and I'll be serving as the moderator. Uh, as always, we want these events at Actual Tech Media to be educational. Uh, we know how tough it can be out there in the world of uh, technology and enterprise IT, and we want to help to solve your technology challenges. So we encourage your questions there in the questions pane of your audience console, and we will be doing a live Q&A session at the end of the event with our expert presenters. We even have a best question prize to help encourage your questions, and I'll be talking about that here in just a moment. Uh, but first, I want to call your attention there to the questions pane. I see many of you saying hello and good afternoon. Uh, we appreciate that, of course, uh, but keep those technical questions coming. Uh, again, this is an introductory topic to Web3 gateways, so I'm sure a lot of you will have you know, even introductory questions on exactly how this is, what it works. Uh, so as you go along the way, feel free to ask. We also will have a poll question at the end of the event, and we appreciate your participation in that poll. I also want to call your attention there to the handouts tab. It's there that you'll find a resource. It's a white paper on the Cloudflare uh, Interplanetary File System Gateway, the IPFS Gateway. Uh, it's a PDF you can download and check it out after the event for additional information. So I encourage you to check that out. And then finally, at the end of the webinar today, I'll be announcing the winner of our Visa $300 gift card. If you're watching this on demand, of course, the drawing would have already occurred. The prize terms can be found right there in the handouts tab as well. And then we also, as I mentioned, have our best question prize. This is for an additional $50 Visa gift card for the best question on today's live event. That means you have to ask a question. The prize winner will be selected and contacted via email after the event. All right, so with that, I'm excited now to welcome and bring in our expert presenters. Welcome to Humer Ahmed, Technical Marketing Engineer at Cloudflare, and Varun Mehta, Product Manager at Cloudflare. Cloudflare. Uh, Humer and Varun, it's great to have you on the event. Uh, I'll hand it first off to you, Varun. Take it away. All right, perfect. Thank you, David, and thanks, everyone, for joining us today. Really happy to be here. Uh, as David mentioned, I'm a product manager here at Cloudflare. I only recently joined our Web3 product team as of January, uh, but I've been at Cloudflare five years plus. And uh, when I saw this roll up and up, I, I knew that I had to pursue it because of the excitement and momentum in the space. Uh, so let's get right into it. Sorry. Uh, good morning, everyone. Name's Amir Ahmed. I'm a technical marketing director here at Cloudflare. Been in development, networking, security space for the last 20 years and excited to be here presenting with Varun. Thanks, Umer. Sorry about that. Okay, let's dive right in. Uh, as David mentioned, we're doing an intro to Cloudflare's Web3 gateways today. I'm going to kick us off by talking about Cloudflare's history and mission. I'll hand over to Humer to cover some technical details on uh, what Web3 is and, and what our gateways are. And then we'll talk about examples and customer use cases. Quick disclaimer. Uh, we are currently in the midst of a launch. So everything you'll see in this presentation is what the architecture is intended for, for GA or general availability, but all of this can be subject to change, right? As we continue doing our development. So for those of you who are not familiar with Cloudflare, I'll do a quick background. Uh, we are an internet infrastructure company and we're mission driven. Our mission is to help build a better internet. How exactly are we doing that? All of that goes back to our global network. So we built out a, a global network with points of presence in 250 plus cities in 100 countries around the world. Uh, that network is securing and accelerating 30 million plus internet properties. And what that means is we're blocking something like 90 or 100 billion cyber threats every single day. Important to note that from every point of presence and in fact, down to every server, uh, we're running every single service. So uh, the reason that that's exciting, we run a commodity white box hardware and basically all of our magic happens in the software and forgive the pun, those of you who are familiar with our uh, magic firewall and magic WAN services. Uh, 
that global network gives us 121 plus terabits per second of network capacity. We're peered with more than 10,000 other networks and we're present in all the IXs around the world. Uh, we're one of the most peered networks on earth. And that global footprint, that global scale, it means we're less than 50 milliseconds from 95% of internet users and less than 100 milliseconds from more or less all internet users. We also offer a 100% uptime SLA. So if there are network congestion issues or transient problems, our customers are gonna be um, sort of compensated, reimbursed for that. What are the actual services we're running out of those points of presence? Uh, I've broken it down into two categories here. You can see on the left side, I've talked about our infrastructure services, sort of the reverse proxy model. On the right side, we have our zero trust services. Uh, Cloudflare has been around for about 12, 12 years. And in the first half of our history, really all we did was the very top left. Uh, that's the OSI stack that I've described there from layer one to seven. And layer seven application layer, HTTP services, that was our bread and butter for a long time. Uh, so for those of you familiar with Cloudflare to some degree, it's likely from our DDoS mitigation, cloud-based WAF and firewall and CDN services. Uh, as we evolved, we very quickly moved down the OSI stack. So uh, we launched our TCP and UDP proxy. That's what I have labeled as spectrum and TCP UDP load balancing. Uh, after that, we, we launched our network infrastructure protection and acceleration at layer three. So that's the magic suite of services. We also offer a Cloudflare network interconnect, and that's literally a cable or a virtual circuit um, that we can connect to at, for on-premise services at call -up providers like Equinix and similar. So that's only the infrastructure side. How about zero trust? The last few years, SASE, Secure Access Service Edge, ZTNA have been uh, very popular and, and sort of new and interesting attack vectors that need to be secured as well. So Cloudflare also offers an SWG, a secure web gateway. We also offer browser isolation and we offer secure access and authentication. So that's how our product suite and services has evolved, have evolved over time. Uh, how does that evolution happen? We have two teams inside Cloudflare, Research and ETI, our uh, emerging tech and incubation group. They're tasked with thinking three to five years ahead to anticipate tomorrow's problems. Uh, other projects that they've taken on include things like Keyless SSL, uh, industry-wide standard privacy pass, oblivious DNS over HTTPS, and currently a main focus is post-quantum crypt cryptography. Uh, our Cloudflare research team began exploring Web3 concepts in 2018. That's the year we launched our IPFS gateway, and later we launched our Ethereum JSON RPC gateway in 2019. And three to four years later, after those two gateways have launched, they're now together serving billions of requests and hundreds of terabytes every month. Uh, I've got a collection of a handful of blog posts on the right here, and we'll certainly share some links and some slide deck information after the seminar. Um, now is probably a good time to cover what is Web3 and what are the Web3 gateways? And for that, I'm gonna hand it over to my colleague, Humer. Okay, thanks, Varun. Okay, so before we get into the details on Cloudflare Web3 gateways, let's talk briefly about current challenges and what Web3 is. If you look at the current web model, first there's centralization. So applications and data are centralized and controlled by a single authority where there's reliance on accessing that application and data. And in terms of durability, if that server were to go offline, the respective content and data disappears from the web. We've all been there, right? Bookmarking aside, going back a few months later and it's gone. Uh, further, uh, users have to provide explicit trust. So I'm sure here everyone has had the experience of finding a great site, offering discounts or a great service, but then had to go and do some additional research to determine if that site is legit and can be trusted. Also for verification of transactions and history, there's dependency on the central authority and their systems, which may not be transparent. Uh, and today with location-based addressing, when we access a site or download a file, there's no assurance what we receive is actually what we intended to receive. For example, an application or data could have been hacked and tampered with. Also, applications become siloed in specific provider environments, along with all the user data they harvest and collect. For data being stored and accessed on web servers, multiple files with the same content can exist, creating duplication. And if a file is updated, that entire file has to be uploaded again. And finally, the content being accessed 
is centralized and not necessarily close to end users. Additionally, when users download data, there's a one-to-one -one relationship and performance dependency between a client and a server. So what is Web3? Well, Web3 can be seen as a collection of technologies focused on a new iteration of the web, incorporating inherent aspects of decentralization. So we're moving from a centralized model, such as a server host centric model, to a more decentralized distributed model, like a P2P network, also not controlled by a single authority. Trustlessness. So we're moving from an explicit trust model to a trustless model where obtaining data or using an app does not require explicit trust of an authority. Verification. So we want to provide for inherent verification of data and transactions. Immutability. So we want inherent immutability to prevent tampering of data, transactions, and applications. And finally, transparency. Uh, data and logic should be transparent to the user. Execution and result is determined by code without intervention of any entity. Now, this is still a fairly new and continuously evolving space where there's still a lot of innovation to come. But some of the use cases we've seen in this space are digital money, DeFi, lending, NFTs, digital marketplaces, uh, compliance auditing, ownership tracking, just to name a few. And my colleague here, Varun, is going to speak more about this later on in the presentation. So now that we have some idea of what Web3 is, I'm going to talk briefly about two specific Web3 technologies before discussing what services Cloudflare is providing around these. First, there's the Interplanetary File System, or IPFS, a decentralized storage layer for Web3, and correspondingly, Ethereum, a decentralized compute layer for Web3. And both of these have two important Web3 tenants of decentralization. Uh, sorry, two important Web3 tenants. One, decentralization via leveraging P2P networking, and two, inherent verification via cryptographic hashing. Now, these are much broader topics that can't be covered in detail in this short webinar. I'm going to briefly touch upon them for the purposes of providing some context for the presentation. But if you want more detail, uh, there's a recently released Cloudflare IPFS Gateway white paper that goes into more details on IPFS and Cloudflare IPFS Gateway. And there's also one coming soon on Cloudflare Ethereum Gateway, which talks more in detail on Ethereum and respectively Cloudflare uh, Ethereum Gateway. And if you want an earlier early version of that, feel free to reach out to us uh, offline. Okay, so starting with IPFS. IPFS is a protocol and peer-to-peer -peer distributed network for storing and sharing data. And the nodes on an IPFS network contribute to a distributed file system. Now, the core tenants of IPFS are there's no central entity responsible for storing and serving web content, and it's a trustless model where immutability and verification are implicitly built in. <clears throat> now, going into a bit more detail here, we have an IPFS network with multiple nodes. We add a file to IPFS, and when we add the file, IPFS creates a hash of the file or a content identifier, also known as a SID. And when a user requests the content using a SID, uh, they always know what they intended to receive is actually what they receive because the hashes or the content identifiers match. Now, if the file is changed, a new object is created with a different SID or different content identifier. So what are the benefits of IPFS? Well, first we move to a decentralized model, increasing durability where any node on the P2P network can serve the content. Second, we have inherent trust and verification, where we use content-based addressing, where the unique hash or content identifier ensures what we receive is what we intended to receive. Data is not siloed behind specific providers. Instead, data is free on the IPFS network, and any interface can be built to access the data. Locality and performance. So with IPFS, there are many nodes on the decentralized network that can be close to users. Additionally, when downloading files, Parts of, the files get, parts of the file can be downloaded with different nodes simultaneously. Think of uh, BitTorrent or in the old days, if you remember Napster. And finally, there's some inherent deduplication where every object added to IPFS has a unique hash and there can be no duplication. 
Also, there's some block level deduplication where when a file is updated, IPFS only needs to add the changed blocks. Okay, so moving on to Ethereum quickly, we covered IPFS for the decentralized storage, and now we're going to briefly cover Ethereum for decentralized compute. Now, Ethereum is a decentralized open source programmable blockchain. You can think of it as a distributed database that stores data and blocks that are ultimately linked together using cryptography, thus making verification easy and transparent. And core tenets of Ethereum are there's no central authority to explicitly trust, independence from any central authority and transparency of application behavior, transactions and results, and it's a trustless model where immutability and verification are implicitly built in. Going into a bit more details here, uh, we have an Ethereum network with multiple nodes. Ethereum blockchain is running on these decentralized nodes. This blockchain consists of multiple blocks. And these blocks each have multiple transactions, which are executed by nodes. Now, each transaction has a unique hash, and each block where transactions are grouped together also has a unique hash. What helps provide immutability is that each block has a hash, but also a hash of the prior block, basically creating a chain of blocks cryptographically hashed together. So any attempted change would require all subsequent blocks to be changed, requiring a lot of work and agreement on state. Now, Ethereum was the first programmable blockchain in the sense that users could deploy applications on them. There's been others since, but Ethereum was the first to do this. And these applications are called smart contracts that can be written in different languages, the most popular being Solidity. Now, as the application is deployed on blockchain, it inherently becomes decentralized as well and re is referred to as a decentralized application or a DAP. So what are the benefits of Ethereum? Again, we move to a decentralized model, increasing availability, where if any node is down, the application can be accessed via any other node. There's inherent trustlessness, where you don't have to trust the central authority. The application is deployed on blockchain and behavior and results are deterministic, defined by the contract code. All transactions and history can be easily verified on the blockchain. The applications, data, and transactions are immutable, unlike in the current model where a server can be hacked and applications data modified and tampered with. And finally, transparency, where the application code with deterministic behavior is deployed on the blockchain, invisible for everyone to see. So now that we have some understanding of what these technologies are, what's Cloudflare doing in this space? We're providing easy access to Web3 technologies, so IPFS for distributed storage and Ethereum for the distributed compute layer for Web3. And basically, we're bridging between Web2.0 and Web3 via these Cloudflare Web3 gateways. Now, IPFS and Ethereum have their own protocols and networks. And to be able to use or develop on them, users need to deploy and manage their own IPFS and Ethereum nodes. We're basically becoming the Web3 infrastructure provider and deploying IPFS and Ethereum nodes on the Cloudflare network and giving easy access via an HTTP interface. And this provides multiple benefits. First, ease of access to IPFS and Ethereum networks via HTTP. Second, security. IPFS Ethereum nodes are secured by Cloudflare. Third, no maintenance monitoring. You don't have to deploy, maintain, monitor the nodes. Cloudflare takes care of all of that for you. Reliability. So you benefit from Cloudflare's robust and reliable platform. And performance. So Cloudflare, any cast network, and caching is leveraged. And as Rune mentioned earlier, Cloudflare data centers are across 100 plus countries reaching 95% of the internet connected population globally within 50 milliseconds. So what's Cloudflare IPFS, IPFS gateway providing? Well, again, customers can easily access content on the IPFS network without having to deploy and secure their own IPFS nodes. And IPFS supports using DNS to map easy to remember names to IPFS content. DNS link is the protocol that's used there and Cloudflare supports DNS link, 
allowing customers to serve IPFS content through their domain names. Also, when using the Cloudflare IPFS gateway, customers get the additional benefit of using the Cloudflare CDN, which can cache IPFS content close to users, increasing overall performance. And finally, customers can use IPFS gateway and manage their full security model and additional Cloudflare reliability and performance capabilities through a single pane of glass. Quick view of how IPFS gateway works here. VI Cloudflare's global anycast networking, network incoming HTTP request is sent to the closest data center to the user. Now an application on the worker's serverless platform receives the request and checks the local cache. If IPFS content is cached, it's returned, else workers makes a HTTP request via workers API to IPFS nodes on the Cloudflare network to check if they have the content. If content is cached, it's returned to workers and respectively to the client. IPFS nodes on the Cloudflare network are also peering with the public IPFS network and can access it as needed. Moving on to Cloudflare Ethereum Gateway and what it provides. Again, customers can easily access the Ethereum network without having to deploy and secure their own Ethereum nodes. Also, Cloudflare Ethereum Gateway allows for customers using their own domain names. So JSON RPC queries over HTTP can be sent to a custom domain name. And similar to IPFS, when using the Cloudflare Ethereum Gateway, customers get that additional benefit of using the Cloudflare CDN, which can cache results for content close to users, increasing overall performance. And again, similar to IPFS, customers can use Ethereum Gateway and manage their full security model and additional Cloudflare reliability and performance capabilities through a single pane of glass. Quick view on how Ethereum Gateway works here. Uh, VI Cloudflare's global Anycast network incoming JSON RPC API call over HTTP is sent to the closest data center to the user. An application on the worker server, serverless platform receives the request. And if it's a read operation, it checks the local cache and returns the result they found. If content is not cached, workers will make an API call to Ethereum nodes on the Cloudflare network to retrieve the data and return to workers and client respectively. If workers receives a write operation, workers will make an API call to Ethereum nodes on the Cloudflare network directly and Ethereum nodes on the Cloudflare network are also peering with the uh, public Ethereum networks as well. Now I'm going to hand it over to my colleague Varun, who's going to cover examples and use cases. Okay, thank you, Humar. Uh, here we're gonna cover, so I, I had mentioned previously, the Web3 gateways as they exist today, uh, they're already pushing hundreds of terabytes and billions of requests monthly. Uh, so what exactly is flowing through the gateways? I also saw a question come in. Uh, we're going to do a Q&A at the end, but one of the questions was, uh, do the Web3 gateways used anywhere else besides the financial markets sector? Uh, so we'll answer that question right here. And the answer is yes. Uh, there's almost innumerable use cases. Let's get right into them. So first, the broad category of dApps, also known as distributed applications. Uh, my first bullet point here, for those of us familiar with the CDN world, we generally look at the infrastructure in two layers. The first is the uh, sort of store and compute layer, and this is going to be maybe it's on-premise, maybe it's in one of the big public clouds, the hyperscalers. Uh, in CDN land, we call that the origin. On the other hand, Cloudflare's network and the network of our CDN competitors, that's called the edge network or the delivery network. Uh, so what makes it a DAP distributed? Um, in my view, this is the origin layer. Uh, the edge and delivery layer might be similar. In our case, Cloudflare's Web3 gateways, either IPFS or Ethereum, uh, but the origin layer is distributed. So as Humer walked us through in detail, uh, store, storage layer could be IPFS, it could be Arweave, compute layer could be Ethereum, could be Solana, could be Binance or BNB. Um, so important to note here, DAP developers, they wanna build apps. They don't wanna run infrastructure. So that's what Cloudflare's value proposition is here. Uh, let's make the IPFS and ETH ecosystems easier to access, lower the barrier to entry, um, and hopefully spur adoption. The largest DAP developers, they need scale and reliability. Uh, that's something we're bringing to the table. 
smaller users may be more concerned with cost and the ability to rapidly grow with adoption and momentum. And uh, the sort of auto scaling ability is something that is inherent to our services as well. Moving on. Distributed financial exchanges or DEXs. Uh, DEXs are cryptocurrency exchanges that allow for direct peer-to-peer -peer cryptocurrency transactions. Uh, these can take place securely and importantly, again, as Sumer mentioned, without the need for trusted third-party intermediaries. Uh, because it's dealing with financial services and literally moving money back and forth, DEXs need the most stable and performant infrastructure to help make markets for uh, different tokens and coins. DEXs generally transact on Ethereum or similar blockchain networks, as I mentioned, uh, some other competitors in the space at the layer one level are Solana, Binance, and BNB uh, to transfer funds, create or execute smart contracts, and on and on. Uh, and DEXs, as you can imagine, are highly security conscious. Uh, very important to note, only Cloudflare can offer our industry-leading HTTP security suite in addition to our Web3 gateways. Uh, and this, will, this comes with one unified management interface and, and billing system as well. NFT marketplaces. Uh, if anyone here isn't familiar with NFTs, I, I recommend checking them out. There's a lot of uh, momentum and, and fun and, yes, some hype in the space as well. Uh, in a nutshell, NFTs are, it stands for non-fungible tokens. So these are digital assets represented on a blockchain. Uh, note, I don't say stored on a blockchain, although they are in some cases, but in some cases it's just a hash or a pointer uh, that's pointing to some storage elsewhere. Uh, but what you do get is immutability and verification of ownership. Um, we think of sort of JPEGs, right? So NFT marketplaces are forced to make it a difficult choice. Do they store their off-chain assets in IPFS? Do they store the images in IPFS itself? Uh, and yes, this is decentralized. Yes, this follows the principles of Web3, but the performance is going to be bad natively. Um, on the other hand, they can rely on traditional cloud storage buckets. So what we do with our IPFS gateway, we couple it with our mature uh, global CDN platform. So our gateway will automatically, will retrieve and automatically cache IPFS content uh, at our global points of presence. You can also do our, some sort of front-end optimization, whether that's um, you know, aggressive caching with naming your own TTLs or uh, different types of compression. And NFT marketplaces may also transact with Ethereum. So in that case, if they do, rather than relying on wallets to do so, they can use Cloudflare's Ethereum gateway to transfer asset info and perform those wallet transactions. Cryptocurrency wallets themselves uh, obviously need to uh, need reliable access to the ETH ecosystem or a different chain if they're using a different layer one chain, uh, both to access users' assets and to utilize or transact with them. Uh, transaction volumes can be extremely high and any downtime costs money, not only to the users, they can't make their transactions, but to the wallets themselves. Maybe it's transaction fees, uh, maybe it's just lowered reliability or perception of reliability, which can cost them money in the long run. Um, majority of wallets are app-based, either uh, desktop, laptop, mobile. There are a few browser extensions as well. There's also a concept of a cold storage hardware wallet. Obviously, these don't have performance as their primary goal and aren't going to be a target uh, for the gateways, at least. And then there's a whole category of Web3 infrastructure providers. Uh, there are other JSON RPC gateways that are already live on Cloudflare today either running in Cloudflare on our edge compute workers platform or simply using our layer seven HTTP suite of services, including API protection, caching, uh, firewall, rate limiting, rate limiting, et cetera. Uh, there's also IPFS gateway providers who are uh, either using Cloudflare as a front end uh, sort of API gateway, or perhaps they're actually white labeling our service, which is true for a few players in the space. Uh, storage providers as well, whether that's traditional cloud storage or it's uh, IPFS or competing protocols. Uh, we're partnering with them in, in many different ways. And the same goes for CDN and, and the delivery players out there. Uh, broadly, what I'd like to point out here is we're happy to be the infrastructure provider for infrastructure providers. So uh, in the same way that we are sort of plumbing for the internet in traditional Web 2, we're happy to be plumbing for, for Web 3 as well. So what comes next? Uh, if there's one thing you take away today, there's a ton of momentum in the Web3 space, uh, momentum that 
not only is exciting for Cloudflare as an infra provider, but we believe in the principles and the ideas. And there's a ton of talented uh, startups and founders working on interesting projects out there. Uh, there are other infra infrastructure providers already in the space, but uh, our belief is that none come with Cloudflare's scale and reputation and, and maturity. Uh, so if we can help build a more distributed, more reliable, easier to access, better Web3 uh, for developers and for users alike, then we believe that'll further our mission of helping build a better internet. Uh, so what does that mean in practice? For the gateways, the plan for Q1, uh, end of this month into early next quarter, is to operationalize them and bring them to market. We're moving them from the hands of our research team into the hands of product and engineering. We're integrating them with our broader platform. So we'll give that single pane of glass unified interface. And we have a launch upcoming in Q2. Uh, so please do let us know if there's interest. Uh, after we do our q and I think we'll have a chance to uh, collect some some contact info and uh, we'll be in touch if if it makes sense. Uh, David, I think we'll we'll hand off to Q and A. Excellent. Yeah, great presentation. This is really, really fascinating stuff. Uh, I'm excited to bring back uh, Humera as well. And while we take questions from the audience, I'm just going to bring up this poll for everyone out there that says, what additional information would you like about the Cloudflare solution? And so we want to get your feedback on this poll while we take your questions. And lots of great questions have come in. If you have a question about uh, what, what Web3 is, how it works, anything that you learned on the event today, uh, now's the time to get that question in. I'll go ahead and just start off with this one. Uh, they're asking, is every service built to run in every network location? Uh, sure, I can take that one. The answer is yes. Uh, as you can imagine, we uh, we launch services very regularly, and there are some exceptions. We also offer a China network, and China is a whole different ballgame, so some services don't run inside China. But when a service has reached GA, yes, it runs from every point of presence globally at Cloudflare. Excellent. And then Robert's asking, how does IPFS work when multiple gateway failures occur? Yeah, I can I can take that. So we have a global Anycast network. So on that diagram, as I showed you, uh, when the traffic comes in, the HTTP request comes in, it hits uh, it hits one of the front end uh, workers' applications for that gateway. That's part of the gateway. So if anything were to go down or any issue with that, uh, because of the Anycast network, you would basically get rerouted to another uh, uh, front end. Nice, great resilience. Yeah, I'll just add on there. Yeah. Right, the, the Anycast network is super important and that's the way that we're different than a lot of other providers in the space. So uh, great point, Humer, we can do traffic shaping and it, it can be sort of automatic in some cases. Uh, if we shut off advertisements from a given point of presence, the other points of presence nearby will automatically uh, continue advertising and pick up the incoming traffic. Uh, I just wanna make a distinction. If the question is Cloudflare uh, network failures versus failures of other different gateway providers. And I think that's a really important thing to highlight because there's really only a handful of gateway providers in the space today. And uh, yes, Web3, the idea is decentralization and distribution, but what we're trying to do is bring another option to the table. So uh, I think the more providers, the better, right? So if we're behaving badly or somebody else is, you can always switch from one to the other. So it still follows those uh, sort of inherent decentralization concepts behind Web3. Got it. Okay. And then th this is a good kind of high level question. Why did Cloudflare decide to get into the Web3 space at all? Uh, sure. I'll, I, I kind of touched on that in my last answer. Uh, we're big believers in the concepts. And uh, I think it, it was sort of a natural evolution and choice for us when we saw the adoption of the gateways as a research project. Uh, so the traffic is there, the momentum is there, the customer base is there. And we look at the space as it is, exists today and the infrastructure providers, they're doing great work and they're sort of the pioneers in the space, but they don't have the global reach and the breadth of the platform that we do. So number one, we can bring our 12 years of experience building infrastructure. Number two, we can couple it with the entire product suite we already have today. Uh, so we think it's a no brainer, not only for us, but for our potential customers as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Sounds like Cloudflare is really unique in the space here. I, I'm curious, um, are these products currently available for use? Yes, they are. Uh, so as I mentioned, they're, they're already live today. We've kind of closed down access into a private beta period while we gear up for launch, but 
For those who are super interested and don't want to wait for our launch in a couple more weeks, we're happy to get you into the private beta. Uh, otherwise, we're, we're planning a, a launch with a lot of press and materials uh, coming either late March or early April, so just a matter of a couple of weeks. Well, that's exciting. Very nice. And then what's the feedback been like from you know the current customers who, who have been using this in the beta? Yeah, maybe Humer, you want to take this one? Uh, yeah, we've had uh, some really good uh, feedback from customers. I mean, what, one of the thing is uh, customers, uh, some of the feedback they've gained, they've been very impressed, uh, you know, by our ability to uh, provide the availability and reliability and scale. So they know based on our platform, I mean, just our platform, some of these guys know our global network across 250 cities, 100 plus countries with direct connections to nearly every service provider, right? So we're able to reach 95% of the world population with 15 milliseconds. So they want to be able to leverage at scale. And then the other nice thing is uh, they can leverage that single pane of gas, uh, glass and also use uh, these other Cloudflare uh, capabilities. So they've been, they've been impressed with that. And uh, many of them are also using additional services. Excellent. And then there's a question here. They're asking, can the IPFS gateway and the Ethereum gateway uh, be used together or do they have to be used separately? How does that work? Yeah, uh, I can take that. So uh, although we do see cases where customers are using both IPFS gateway and Ethereum gateway, uh, they don't have to be used together. It depends on the use case and the customer's requirements. It can be expensive to store data on the Ethereum blockchain. So in some cases, customers will use Ethereum for uh, the application and IPFS for the decentralized storage and leverage the Cloudflare gateways accordingly. Got it. And then yeah, what's we've the we've pricing? Yeah, we've entered a, a sort of world. Go ahead. Sorry, David. I, I'll just tack on to that. We, we've basically landed in a place right now where uh, most applications out there, whether you can call that, whether you want to call them a DAP or just a traditional application, um, Web three native we call them sort of hybrid apps at this point. So maybe the uh, storage is on IPFS and it transacts with Ethereum on the back end, but the front end is a very traditional sort of quote unquote web two. Um, I think we're, we're fighting a battle between decentralization and performance and usability on the other side. So a lot of our customers have landed somewhere in this middle ground and uh, up, to, up to them whether they want to use IPFS gateway or ETH gateway or both in some cases. So we, we see all of the above for sure. Excellent. And then what's the pricing model like this, like for this? Uh, sure, I'll take this one. Uh, we try to be as straightforward as possible with this, and there's some very complex pricing out there. I know other providers, uh, they actually might charge based on compute units. Uh, that's one way we're unique as well, David, to your point. We, we already have a globally distributed edge compute serverless platform, so we're not going to quote unquote, you know, nickel and dime customers on compute. Uh, for IPFS, it's straight up data transfer, ingress and egress monthly. And for Ethereum, it's pure HTTP requests. We don't care how heavy or light the, the requests are. Excellent. And then let's see, here's a good question from Ned. He's asking, what can folks do to get started with Web3? Uh, you know, for those out there who are relatively new to this, as I'm sure most everyone is, what do you recommend? You know, it's a good question. Uh, I, I didn't mention this in my use cases, but some a really interesting concept that's cropped up over the last uh, few months or the last year, couple of years. Uh, there's the idea of a DAO, uh, D-A-O, it stands for Decentralized Autonomous Organization. Uh, I saw another question as well. What is the difference between uh, Ethereum as a cryptocurrency versus Ethereum as a token? And, and DAO sort of play into this. Uh, a DAO is essentially a, a distributed self-governed organization where Investing in the DAO and you know either mining or buying some tokens gives you access to that governance and, and that process. Uh, so DAOs are they're they're everything from sort of learning about Web three towards participating in Web three to uh, managing different types of organizations. There was a DAO to attempt to buy a physical copy of the U.S. Constitution. I don't think that it actually was successful, but uh, I think that's a interesting angle because there's a community aspect to it as well. So. Go look up some DAOs, D-A-O-S. Uh, go see what's exciting to you, what interests you have in, in the technology space. There's going to be a DAO centered around it. And uh, to participate, you have to have some tokens. You have to have membership. Uh, 
And it's interesting sort of experiment in, in self-governance with cryptocurrency and blockchain principles behind it. So I think that's a really interesting way to, to check in that space. Very cool. D-A-O-S. I'm going to go look that up myself. That sounds fascinating. Uh, decentralized yeah. autonomous organizations. All right. Um, let's see. I think we've answered uh, most of the questions. Are there any other questions, uh, Humer or Varun, that you want to hit on uh, before we wrap up? I see one from Jeffrey. Do the Web3 gateways shape traffic based on application? Uh, that's an interesting question, and and this ties into you know what's changing between the gateways as they're live today versus after our launch. Uh, as they exist today, it's as simple as a C name. You point a C name to Cloudflare's endpoint, we'll order a cert for you, and that's basically it. So all we're doing is translating HTTP into uh, either Ethereum or IPFS functions. Uh, when we launch, you'll have the ability to use, to stack all other Cloudflare services on top of a gateway endpoint. Firewall rules based on hostname or path, or uh, we have a concept called page rules. You can do rate limiting. You can do, uh, you can write your own worker. So you can modulate request and response any, any way you want. Uh, so the possibilities become limitless. So yes, that's coming in the next few weeks. Very cool. That's exciting. All right. Excellent. Well, I think that's a great place to wrap up. Uh, Varun and uh, Humer, it's been really fascinating here learning about Cloudflare, Web3 gateways. I learned a lot. I know the audience did as well. Thank you so much for your excellent presentation. Thank you. Thank you, David. Thank you, David. Happy to be here. And of course, thank you to everyone out there in the audience who joined us on the webinar today. Uh, make sure that you check out the handouts tab. Again, that's where you can download the white paper and get additional information on Cloudflare IPFS gateways. Uh, some excellent resources uh, are included in that document. So make sure that you download it now. Um, before we wrap up, I want to encourage everyone who hasn't yet to answer the poll question there on the screen. We do want to get your feedback on that. And I'll just leave that up while I announce the winner of our 300 or I'm sorry, Visa $300 gift card. This is going to Ken Spicknall from Pennsylvania. Congratulations, Ken Spicknall from Pennsylvania. And with that, thank you so much to everyone who joined us on the webinar today. Uh, again, visit cloudflare.com and also check out the handout for additional information. Have a great day and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.